Noah's work that I'm showing you here was rated at a professional level in all five areas of the rubric. So let me give you some examples of why. In terms of organizing the letter, we'll talk about that first. One of the things that's important to do at the beginning, you can see in my comment here, is to have a positive buffer. So we, you saw this in the example that was posted on Canvas. Uh, Noah does it here. <clears throat> excuse me. Noah does it here too. So he says things like, I found the videos to be highly informative, logically structured. All right, your client or an author is much more likely to accept your advice if they think you recognize their strengths. This is just a, a good way to give feedback, constructive criticism to anyone about anything. Part of what's also good about this introduction is that this paragraph in particular tells me as the client that Noah heard what I had to say when I told him what I wanted him to do for me. So he reiterates who I told him the audience was. All right. Uh, other things about organization. Uh, used, he, Noah used headings uh, and subheadings. The subheadings are pretty good at telling me what the recommendation underneath them is going to be. Um, one of the things that I will also say about Noah not only organized effectively at the macro level, in other words, the whole letter, but also on a micro level. So let's look at this example here, on-screen text. He begins by saying most of the on-screen text currently is dedicated to examples or structure. This is very helpful. And then, oh, the beautiful transition, however. So he begins with a positive buffer and then delivers his criticism. Consider presenting a brief one-sentence definition. These would be ideally placed before the example. So part of what's good about the content here is that Noah's suggestions were persuasive because they were detailed. Those specific examples from existing videos assure me as the client that he reviewed my material carefully and that he has a concrete plan for what needs to be done in order to improve them. So I crossed over into the area of content then, but it also has to do with the way he organized the content that he presented. All right, let's see. In terms of uh, another thing that I want to point out in terms of both content, but also style and tone. One of the things that you learn about in my lecture on editor-author relationships is about the payoff statement. Um, talks about the use of a payoff statement in order to convince an author to accept an editor's suggestion. So what happens here is the suggestion, on-screen definition, should only be used for terms that you feel your audience might be confused about. It shouldn't replace the narration, but it will emphasize and clarify key points for the audience, thus providing a more effective learning experience for them. All right, that's a that's ab that's an absolute payoff statement. What I want to have happen as a client is, or as an author or creator, is for these things to happen. And what what my editor has done is tell me if I do what they suggest, I'm going to get what I want. Uh, let's see other things that I can point out. Um, I, I noted here that. Noah did a great job with tone. He anticipated objections. This is always a good thing to do to be persuasive. So he says, I'm aware that the examples come from the sample document, but so this is also an effective, uh, an effective way to deliver the criticism. More clear, authoritative and polite suggestions. Consider shortening the introduction. And then he goes on to give me details about what that means. All right, more positive buffers, more payoff statements, uh, more details. Um, part of what I tell him here is in this section on design, he has probably gone outside the bounds of a structural edit because most things that would have to do with design are more like copy editing. In other words, they're not really about the content of the material or how it's organized so much as they are how it's presented. But part of what I said to him is that this section in his case is a bonus to the client because above there are maybe eight specific recommendations that have to do with content and organization. 
Um, let's see, gives me much more here. And then one of the things I also do is let him know that he concluded in the right way, which is to look forward. So in this kind of a letter, what the editor wants is to encourage the client to continue working with them and collaborating. So you want some kind of a conclusion that suggests that that's what you want too, as the editor, and you're going to make it happen. Um, I haven't said anything in particular about mechanics uh, or design, but, well, I guess I said something about design of the letter. Um, the headings, certainly, and the illustrations certainly help me as the reader uh, go through the content and know what I'm going to find in the letter. The mechanics are flawless in this, which is super important. Even if you're a structural editor, your authority and credibility is undermined if you're, there are mechanical errors in what you write to the client or author. Okay, so I hope this gives you a sense of what a professional level performance would look like on a structural edit.